So yeah, I'm gonna just whack it in my Segola, mix it up two to one, and let's go in there and paint some shit. So I'm ready to mix up the clear, and I've got some old candy. Autobahn clear coat, it's called old candy wet wet. Um, I've got a slow harden with it. I was actually given this by a follower of mine. He imports it uh, from the USA over to here in Perth. And I've met him, he's a good guy, Martin, from here in Perth. Um, he tells me it's one of the best clears on the market. Now, there's a few things that reading this clear it just doesn't seem quite right. Spray, it's telling you to spray at 50 PSI. Now, that's just about double the pressure I would ever use. Um, so, I don't know if I'm actually going to be doing that, but I'll just see. So, I believe there's no reducer required in this, so it's just your 2 to 1 ratio uh, with whatever hardener. And he says, give it like a long time, like 15 to 20 minutes in between coats. And he just, well, as the name would suggest, you go wet and then you wait and then you go a wet. So, two, you know, banging wet coats. So, yeah, I'm going to just whack it in my Segola, mix it up 2 to 1, and let's go in there and paint some shit, guys. Alright, so I've got me clear coat in the gun, all strained in there. There's a few bits here, I might even just give it a light tack rag off, a bit of that over, misty overspray. A few dirty spots behind here. That actually looks pretty gangster, I reckon, I like that. I'm happy with that. I decided just to leave that booth box just plain green. And with these uh, spiders. Yeah, all those bits of glitter are just sticking to that tack rag, so I'll probably just leave that. Barely needs it. All right, well, let's see how this wet wet goes. I mean, let's see how we go with the uh, 50 PSI. I mean, that's a three and a half bar, but yeah. So I'm sure most of you guys have been watching this video set unfold on my YouTube channel. Now this is part four and the final video on painting my toolboxes. I decided to turn it into a review and demonstration on All Candy's Wet Wet Clear Coat. I've actually had this stuff sitting in my room at home for about, yeah, six months now. I was just waiting for the right job to use it up on. So this uh, turned out to be a perfect job to use it on and do a review on it. I've had actually quite a few people asking about this clear coat and asking for my opinion on it. Um, so I'm sure a few people will be uh, glad to finally see me do the review on it. Um, I can tell you straight away that I really do love the clear. Um, it's a top quality clear coat. Uh, look, at the end of the day, it's going to be like anything else. If you uh, want to spend that money on a top line clear, you're gonna have to find out how much it's worth and compare it to the other brands and decide if it's going to be right for you. Um, I did notice when it was in the pot, it was a touch on the yellow side. Now to me that says it's probably got some good UV resistance in it. Um, that's what I've noticed, like some of the top line clears, especially like the Glazer at 255 clear, it was quite yellow. Um, so it may be a bit of an issue for some people uh, if they're doing candies and stuff like that and they didn't want any discoloration at all. I do know that the DNA Custom Paints uh, clears, they had the Diamond Clear and that was basically like a full clear clear coat. So I know that some people doing airbrushing and uh, especially in the Custom scene, they may say that I need an absolutely 100% clear coat because I don't want it to discolor my uh, colors. You know, if you get those really vibrant uh, candies, and especially if you go to flow coat them, that little bit of yellow can actually make a difference. So I actually did a VL Commodore respray. I'm sure a lot of you guys watched that, and I flow coated it. I flow coated it with a good clear coat, and it was a little bit on the yellow side. There was two little pop-up headlight covers. Now, at the end of that job, I just got to the point where I'm like, you know what, I can't be stuffed flow coating them and the extra couple of coats of clear really did change that color so it's just something to keep in mind apart from that it holds a really nice gloss if you hang around for a few more minutes i'll give you guys a look at uh, the gloss it holds and i'll actually end up flow coating the lid of that toolbox because i use the flakes on it so yeah most of the time when you use flakes you do need to flow coat right, so that's the first coat of clear um that 50 psi thing was an absolute just not gonna happen type thing um I like the clear though. I can't say it's any worse than any other or any better than any other custom clear at this point. I really need to see how it looks after the second coat and how it holds its gloss over the weekend. So that's gonna be a big part of it. So I'm not gonna be baking it. Um, 
but you can see even back to the actual color itself that looks pretty cool um, you'd probably struggle to get a standard metallic to look like that with the amount of depth that that's got um, and again one more coat of clear and a flow coat would actually bring that right up again and um, you can see that looks like there's just been sand thrown all through it but that's just those flakes the size of those flakes but um, the blue itself if you look through um, that or we'll have a look on this side the blue itself actually looks quite nice it's sort of like a bit like a candy blue poor man's candy as I say you know um, I think this video has been a success so far I'm gonna go out have a bit of a tidy up clean out the rest of those guns um, clean those stencils down give this 15 20 minutes uh, we'll come in and put that next coat of clear on all right let's get this second coat of clear on so I gave that a good 15 20 minutes all my guns are clean once this is done I'll be right to start on my next bit actually I've got an idea have to tune in for that one but um that's uh, tacked off seems to be holding a fairly nice gloss you can sort of tell when it's tacked off it's, no it's leaving a fingerprint but it's not stringing or it's not actually wet so yeah let's go whack that next coat on so I ended up watching a video from the owner of this clear coat so all candy wet wet they've actually got a reasonable size YouTube channel themselves and they do some how-to tutorial videos on spray painting too so I watched his video on how they recommend setting the gun up for 50 psi and what they're basically just gone and done is narrowed the fan right in to set the air pressure at 50 psi now um, if you hang around to the very end of this video, I gave it a shot. So originally when I was painting these parts here, I, I hadn't actually seen that video. So 50 PSI with full fan, which is what I'm used to, was just totally ludicrous and just not going to happen. Um, so I did end up trying his recommended settings, but it was just over atomizing still. It was, you had to move uh, so fast and you just really couldn't see what's going on on the panel. Um, I had to hold the gun so far back so that I actually had a open enough fan that you're actually hitting enough area as well and I ended up just saying that that's it's just not really the right way to spray I know how to use HS and low VOC clears and as far as I'm concerned that's not how you use them so yeah I don't recommend using their recommend their recommended settings if that makes sense so no offense to the makers of the clear coat, um, but I personally wouldn't recommend anyone spray any two-pack clear coats at 50 psi. Um, maybe if you're using those old suction fed guns, I really don't have enough experience with the suction fed guns to even comment on that, but I do know that with some of those old guns, people did used to use a lot higher pressure than what we do these days. I think part of the reason they may actually recommend using those settings is that it's quite a thick HS clear and they don't recommend reducing it. Um, so to get such a thick clear out of the gun, they say turn the pressure up, wind the fan in, and that will get it out of the gun quicker. But um, I was spraying, this day was like 35 degrees Celsius. I'm not sure what that is in Fahrenheit, but it was a pretty hot day. So the clear had actually naturally thinned itself down. It, was, uh, it wasn't it was overly thick anyway. Um, so yeah, look, at the end of the day, have a play around with it. If 50 PSI works for you, um, I'm really actually interested to see if anyone does spray it like that. Like the guy that gave me this clear, he's uh, right into the custom car and low rider scene over here in Perth. Great guy, his name's Martin. He's actually from the UK and he's got his own little YouTube channel and Instagram page. So if you are interested in getting some of this clear and you are in Perth, I do recommend that you check out the candy factory. But yeah, back to what I was saying a minute ago, he actually uses it at the 50 PSI. He said that using the TE10 air cap on his DeBulbus Pro Light helps also. All right, so that's it. Look, my verdict on the clear, it's actually quite a good clear. I do like it. It, it goes on nice and wet. Um, I just got a feeling that it's going to hold a nice gloss. Uh, the whole 50 PSI thing, yeah, nah. But yeah, back to the actual colour itself, I think that's pretty nice. The back, you can see I um, put one less coat on the back there of the candy. Or the fake candy, and it's you can really see that it's made a big difference. And same with this part here. I put less of that fake candy over the bottom because I was starting to run out. And you can really see that that extra coat, so the three coats is really where you want to be. Alright, 
Oh, well, there you go. I've spent a few hours making this video, but um, hopefully some of you guys have gained something out of it. I've had a bit of fun doing it, and wow, that blue, that's actually really nice. That extra coat of clear, that's really brought the, the depth up in that blue. Not looking at the flakes, but looking through that to the blue, it's, it's quite nice. So, that was a bit of fun. So the idea for the next video is, I've seen a few YouTubers um, basically sucking up Cider's ass, trying to say that their RPS cups have the best flow rates. Um, I did a bit of a preliminary test with just water and it turned out they were no quicker so I'm actually going to get a PPS and I'm going to basically waste a litre of clear. I paid for it through the boss but um, yeah just for the purpose of the video. I've got nothing to gain either way so. So I thought I'd give you guys a quick look at the gloss that it retained over the weekend. So I painted it on the Saturday and this is the Monday on my lunch break. I decided to prep it up for a flow coat. I then hung it up in the booth and then uh, gave it a flow coat when I was doing another job. Again with the wet wet clear. So for the prep work before I flow coat it, I've just got 600 on the orbital sander interface pad. Then I went around all the edges just with 800 grit dry again and just did that by hand just to get rid of all the uh, yeah the shiny spots and mow down all those uh, high spots from the flakes that I sprayed on it the weekend before. So we're in the booth and this is what I was telling you guys about before how I gave uh, their recommended settings at 50 psi a shot. So I gave that a good 15 minutes again as I did last time and as they recommend now I actually had a slow hardener with this uh, clear coat so it's pretty important that you do uh, observe the flash off time. I'll just let you guys watch me put this next coat of clear coat on and if you hang around for a few more minutes you'll be able to see the kind of gloss that it retains uh, after the next morning. So again it didn't actually get a bake but it definitely held a very nice deep gloss something that you really struggle to get without buffing uh, using an MS clear coat and really pumping a good amount of clear on there and polishing the heck out of it. But yeah, the gloss that it retains, it won't really die back as much as the MS clear. Um, and yeah, it does give you some good filling capabilities as well. So, you know, it, it, it was able to fill up all those uh, uh, flakes from when I painted it the first time. So chill out here, watch me spray the rest of it. And uh, thanks for watching guys.
So there you go, there's the next morning. It really does just about look like a mirror. You can see my face as clear as, yeah, you can just about shave in that bloody thing. So, yep, my verdict on that clear is it is an absolutely amazing top line clear. Um, again, it's just gonna depend on whether or not you can afford it, and I don't even know what it goes for in your area. I think Martin told me that it goes for around $480 retail here in Perth. So obviously that's gonna vary depending on where you are, but yeah, give it a shot. It, gets my thumbs up anyway. Hope you guys have enjoyed watching this video and stick around for the next one. Thanks for watching. This has been another Gunman production. Now get out there and paint some shit.